Let's consider the exponential function whose equation is y equals a b to the x. Notice that this equation differs from other function families we've looked at because the variable x is an exponent and we've never seen that before. We've had numbers as exponents but no variables as exponents. So first let's talk about what this means. We have y equals a b to the x. a is what we call our starting amount and a will always be a positive number. So a is always greater than zero. b is our growth factor. And we're going to put the same restriction on b that b will always stay greater than zero. b cannot be a negative number. The other thing we're going to say is that b cannot equal one. And your teacher or another video will clue you in as to why some of these restrictions are what they are. But we're just going to talk about what these functions look like. So if b is a number greater than 0 and not equal to 1, then one of two things can happen. b can be bigger than 0 but smaller than 1, or b can be greater than 1. And these are the two differences in our exponential function. First, let's consider the case where b is greater than 1. So we have the equation y equals a b to the x. Now when we go to sketch the graph, we know that a is a positive number. And so our graph will cross the x-axis at the point 0, a. Because if we put 0 in for x, we know that anything to the 0 power is 1, and so we know that y will equal a. So we get our y intercept that way. We also know from our rules on exponents that it is impossible to take a positive number b and raise it to an exponent and have it become a negative number. So we know that our graph will exist above the x-axis. And since b is bigger than 1, when we raise a number bigger than 1 to a power, it's going to continue to grow. And so our graph is going to look like this. It will have an asymptote at the x-axis because there's no x value that we can substitute into this equation that will allow us to get 0 for a y value. So this is what is called exponential growth. Now if we take the other case where b is smaller than 1 but still positive, some of the same characteristics will hold. We have our graph. We are still going to pass through the value 0a and we are still going to have an asymptote on the x-axis. But now, since b is a number between 0 and 1, when we take a fraction smaller than 1 and we raise it to a power, that number will continue to get smaller. So our gra graph will get smaller as our x values get bigger, and we get a graph that looks like this, which is exponential decay. some similarities to the graphs. They both have asymptotes at the x-axis. They both pass through the point 0a, but growth is increasing as we move from left to right, and decay is decreasing as we move from left to right. 